Okay, Tom, what do we have here? Well, uh, Dave, we have my treasured 1983 Rolls-Royce Corniche convertible that I hate to let go, but uh, the dough is going right into my home remodel. So some things have to give when, when that happens. It's also good to see you again with the success you had selling my Sunbeam Alpine convertible a year or so ago. Uh, you were the guy that I wanted to talk to. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yes, this is uh, this is a car that I've I think I've loved since I was about 13 years old and saw one at a car show with my dad back in Philadelphia. I looked and looked and looked for the right car to buy, and uh, let me tell you, they're they're hard to find. Uh, Corniches were uh, the problem with a lot of Corniches were they weren't driven very much. So that means that the hydraulic system wears out over time, the rubber seals get dry. Actually, the, this is in, inverse to most cars in that the more you drive these, the better off you are. Uh, and so when I found this one that had, uh, was a California car. It lived in Las Vegas for a very short time, apparently. I'm not sure who owned it back then but it uh, was in really, really great shape and had been well taken care of. In fact, ironically, shortly after I got the car, I wanted to have a good mechanic look it over, so I asked around Los Angeles who the best Rolls-Royce mechanic was, and it turned out it's a guy named Frank McLean in Encino. So I drove, I'd made an appointment, and I drove it into Frank's shop, and he, before he said even hello to me, he said, hey, I know that car. He said, I've taken care of this car for the previous two owners. Wow. So he knew it very, very well. And I had him go all through it. Changed, we changed out the hoses. Uh, anything that looked like uh, it needed some work was done. But luckily, the car was in such great shape that not much was needed. And how many miles does it have now? It has, I believe, a little over 71,000 miles. These cars, by the way, are getting harder and harder to find on the resale market. I couldn't figure out why until Frank or someone told me that a lot of these are being shipped to Europe and the Middle East, hmm. where they are extremely popular. And so uh, that would explain why you see less and less of them on the road. I, I keep the car all cleaned up and polished for car shows. And this, if I can show you right here, is one of the neat things. This is a mock-up, not the original, but a mock-up of the original window sticker for the car, just as it would have looked back in 1983 when it left the factory. And it's fun to look at because it shows everything that the car was ordered with. Here it shows that the exterior was Mason's black, the fine lines, which what they call pinstriping, are double tan. It came with a Connolly saddle tan uh, leather interior. Uh, and uh, then down here, all the standard equipment. Rolls-Royce Corniches had uh, 6.7 liter aluminum V8 engines with Bosch uh, fuel injection. So they drive really, really nicely. Hmm. Of course, they have an automatic transmission. And what makes the, these kind of special is that they've got a really cool hydraulic system that uh, Rolls-Royce licensed from Citroen that keeps the car balanced all the time. So if you have 50 people in the back seat, it's still going to ride nice and level. Great. And then how much was this car new back in the day? Uh, I believe it was $146,000, and that's 1983 money. Wow. So I guess that's equivalent to what a, a new Rolls-Royce convertible would go for today, about half a million. Mm -hmm. here's, here's some Rolls-Royce trivia for you, Dave. That grill right there, which everybody thinks is perfectly square, is actually not. To, it's an optical illusion that the ancient Greeks discovered when they built the Parthenon. Hmm. That you have to round the corners a little bit, bow them out just ever so slightly to make it look straight. So this is slightly bowed, this is slightly bowed, everything's slightly bowed. Hmm. And there, was only, there were only two guys, I believe, at Rolls-Royce in England who uh, could build these radiators. It's all hand soldered from a whole bunch of different pieces of metal. Nothing on that was pressed. Okay, Tom, what about this engine? Well, this is the uh, famous Rolls-Royce 6.75 liter aluminum V8. It's way down in there. This is the Bosch fuel injection. These two things here are part of the hydraulic system which control the height. And this 
here holds the hydraulic fluid, which is a special kind of fluid, and they warn you not to put the wrong stuff in here, and it just goes right in there. I take care of this car, you know, all the basics myself, it's so easy. Uh, the, the oil uh, is right there. Uh, Frank McLean, my mechanic, did do a neat little modification here. I don't know if you can see this switch. Um, he told, I've never actually used it, but he told me that if I get stuck in heavy, heavy traffic and I want the radiator fan to run continuously, flip that switch. Hmm. I never have. I've never had any, any problems with it. Power steering, of course, over there. Okay. The engine runs fantastic. Um, Let's see, what else can I tell you about this? This is the uh, this is the washer fluid, of course. This is part of the air conditioning system. The nice thing about this is that uh, it's pretty much a standard automotive V8 engine of the era. So almost any mechanic can figure it out, which is why it's a shame I've, I've heard of people taking the Rolls-Royce engines out and putting Chevys in because they had this idea that the Chevy would be more reliable, which is absolutely ridiculous. This is as reliable as a Chevy engine, uh, and uh, it's a shame to ruin a car like that. My car is totally original. Everything is original in this car. Everything's numbers matching. Um, it's just as it rolled out of the factory. Some of the goodies that are in the trunk, but while we're on our way back to that end of the car, let me just point out a couple of things. These uh, are cracks in the paint. You find this on virtually every Corniche convertible because this is where the stress point was of the, uh, of the convertible because there was no top. It's no big deal, and, and, and you really only see it when you, close, you get close. And then back here, this is something else you'll see on many, many Corniche convertibles. This is where paint, some paint was cracking. You only see it if you get very close up, but uh, it's because there's, it's a chemical reaction going on of three different kinds of metal. There's aluminum, steel, and lead from the factory that's all coming into one area, and over time that kind of tends to bubble. So it's been, it's been uh, we've done the best we can on that. I am reluctant to repaint this car. Uh, because I, I like the idea of keeping it as a preservation piece. Mm -hmm. uh, it makes a big difference when I enter it into a show. In fact, I should say, this car won first place at the Santa Anita uh, Rolls-Royce Concours about, what was it, two, two years ago, I suppose? Hmm. First place. And uh, it's, that was partially because the car is in such amazing original condition and, and runs so well. And... Uh, I should also tell you that my excitement about Rolls-Royce and Corniche led me to uh, become a board member of our local club, the Rolls-Royce uh, Owners Club of Southern California. Fantastic. This gift I'm throwing in for the new owner. First of all, before we get into that, let me show you something very, very special. This is an official Rolls-Royce picnic kit. These are almost impossible to find. Uh, this was met, this was put together by Rolls-Royce. Uh, it has uh, obviously the Rolls-Royce logo on all the, the plates. Uh, it's, it's a service for four. It has the logo on the knives and forks. This is all just as it came. There are the teacups, the um, thermos. Uh, even even has a salt and pepper shaker. Uh, I've got a set of Baccarat uh, champagne glasses, and here's Rolls-Royce logo. Uh, t uh, tablecloth and napkins. We've had some great uh, picnics where I've used these, but I refuse to use any of this. Mm -hmm. I don't want. I don't want to take this out. This is a very, very valuable piece. The last one I heard about being offered for sale was at a Bonhams automotive auction about five years ago, and back then it went for twenty-five hundred dollars. Wow. I'm going to include that with the car, and I should say at a car show I set this up in the back seat, and that draws so much attention. And conversations. Dave, while we're at this part of the car, let me just tell you a couple of things about the interior. Uh, you can see all that burl uh, wood in there. That is all the original wood. It is in great shape. And I think most people know this, but if you don't, I'm going to tell you anyway. What they, when they built that dashboard, they took one piece of um, veneer and split it down the middle. And divide it half there and half here. If you look real close, you can see that's the dividing line. It's what's called a matched, matched book, and uh, the leather is nice and soft and in really great shape. Uh, the car, when I got it, was missing its original 
um, sheepskin carpeting, which it had originally uh, come with. You can see it down here. So there's a company called Hillborn. They are the top of the top of Rolls-Royce uh, uh, interior uh, restoration people. And I had them put together a complete set of front and rear Mouton carpets. And under there, underneath there, there's the original carpets in mint condition. Looks mm -hmm. like nobody ever stepped on them. But I, wa I did want to mention that to you. Sure, it's great. Beautiful car. There's a, the car comes with a leather boot, which is often missing from these cars. Just a quick mention of the top. The, the, the top uh, of, the, of the car, convertible top, is the original Everflex top. It is close to mint condition. There's not a scratch or a cut or anything. The, the headline, the wool headliner uh, is in superb condition. Uh, the power top works great. Uh, the hydraulics work fantastic. Um, all in all, the car is a dream to drive. It floats like it's on a cloud. It has, it has uh, what I call old-fashioned suspension, so it really feels good on a bumpy highway. Dave, thanks for letting me show off my beloved Rolls Royce to you today. I hope it goes to a good home. I would give this bit of advice to anybody who's thinking about buying uh, a Rolls Royce from this era, particularly a Corniche. That's be careful what car you get in the beginning. Uh, there's so many instances I've heard of where people buy these just based on their looks and their excitement and then find out they need tens of thousands of mechanical work to, uh, to drive and that's what you want to avoid. This car, uh, my last plug to you, is that this car is in uh, really, really good shape. I think you could take this and drive it across the country right now if you wanted. Uh, and uh, I, of the cars that are going to be out there and it's competition for sale, I think this is going to be the best one. Well, so, that's super. Thank you again. Okay, thanks very much, Tom.